Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kolp. I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It is Friday, September 6th. I think it is, right? Uh, 2024. I still can't believe I say it's 2024. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, serious talk on everything that affects you. We're going to start off with the markets. We'll do jobs. The fake jobs numbers, the election, your job, your industry, the economy, and everything else swirling around us as we go into this weekend. <sighs> On the week, uh, the NASDAQ. was down uh, 436 points. Excuse me, my bad. That's today. On the week was down 1,022 points. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, and the week was only four days. Uh, the drop was 5.77% this week. On the week, the NASDAQ 100 was down 1,153 points, 5.89%. The S&P 500, if I have it right, was down four and a quarter percent, down 239 points. On the week, the Dow was down, let me get the number right, 2.87%, uh, about 1,200 points. Now remember, just in four days. Uh, on the week, the Russell 2000 down five and a half percent 120 points on the week the transports were down want to make sure i get the number right uh 3.8 percent 610 points so i want to watch my words i want to be careful with my words We have tried to, first off, I'm a Fox News Channel business contributor. I've been there for many years. It is an honor and a privilege to be able to do that, that they would put so much trust in me on a daily basis. And I pretty much appear every day, uh, but we do it in snippets, uh, three to five minute hits. Uh, sometimes twice an hour. When I am in studio, let's say Varney and Company, I'm on for the whole hour and we go through a litany of things. But we really don't get to dive deep like we can here on the radio show as I am on 40 minutes an hour uh, minus uh, the ads that are run. And there are certain things, if I explain to you the market's up, the market's down, that's easy pickings. But there are some things that I explain to everybody that I'm not sure it gets out there, gets the people. We have absolutely, and I'm measuring my words, absolutely nailed the Fed and their impotence, and their ignorance, and their believing they are omnipotent. And it's unfortunate. You see, the Fed is just people. They're, they're called the central bank. And you can go look up what their job is. They keep saying their mandate is for stability and jobs and all that. The problem that we have and have had, especially with this one, and it goes really back to Bernanke with his money printing, but the problem we have with them, and I'm measuring my words as best as I can, I really am. They don't know what the hell they're doing. 
They think they're in control. They have absolutely no control. They think they engineer the economy and they don't engineer squat. And at the most important junctions, they have completely screwed up. On top of that, they have enabled Marxists like Joe Biden, heavy spenders like Donald Trump, spend us into oblivion and massive debt and deficits. And I'm believing currently, we have mentioned this recently, we're repeating And we're going to say more emphatically because we didn't know when, but we had an idea that eventually the markets were going to shoot a certain finger back at Jay Powell, the head of the central bank. And of course, the people of this country end up being the victims. Let me continue to measure my words. The central bank was never, ever, ever given the permission to print money, but they did. And nobody said a freaking thing. And why wouldn't the heads of our country say a freaking thing? Because they were able to push markets up with their money printing. They were looked at as saving the day. Ben Bernanke was called a hero in fixing the huge problem he created. Interesting, huh? But I have to fast forward to this guy because he is the most extreme we've had on being, and I'm measuring my words, an absolute doofus is the number one most important money man on this freaking planet. And he's still running the show. And as I have said to you, I've said to you time and time again, even while markets were going up in recent months, we were saying there will be a day of reckoning. There has to be. The numbers yell and scream it on a daily basis. So, we had a bad week. And today the Dow was down 410, the S&P 95, the NASDAQ 436, the NASDAQ 100 509. Where are the technology analysts? We're just in the first inning of AI. Everything's great while they crash the AI stocks now. While an analyst, and we're not going to say the name or even the company, an analyst on Supermicro, one of the AI glamour stocks that has gone from, and we're not making these numbers up, kids, six weeks ago, $963 down to $386. The high in March was $1,229. An analyst came out today and lowered his price target from $950 down to $500 and lowered their rating on the stock. After it's dropped 62% in the last six, seven weeks. But back to Jay Powell, because there is the problem. There is the big problem. Because he is screwed up big time again. Okay. By the way, the transports were down 190. The semiconductors down 214 today. We have told you the semiconductors are in a bearish phase of unknown price and time. And we've also told you in the past that they lead markets up and down. 
the semiconductors back to Powell. If you recall, we had something called COVID. And at the time, Powell went insane. And due to the fact everybody was so scared crapless, they let him go insane. He take, took rates immediately down to 0% when we were shutting down. And then he started printing trillions of dollars. Trillions of dollars. And just manipulated and rigged our bond market. Bought up all the bonds. Up next. What's next? I got it all. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. Okay. I'm going to measure my words and try to explain it best. So you're the most important man on earth in the financial system. And you're getting everything wrong. What happens when the market recognizes that? And sees it. And feels it. We've told you time and time again, we think the market has a big set of ears, Dumbo ears. And a big mouth. Like Ralph Cramden of the Honeymooners, I've got a big mouth. And as I've also told you, that's what we listen to. The big mouth of the market. In simple terms, he printed to $9 trillion and never had to. He took rates to zero and never had to. He thought he was a hero But the only reason why we all came back is COVID went away. We opened back up. And we're back to working. Had nothing to do with him. Now, he's being credit who he kept the system flowing, but we were shut down. Anyhow, that printing to $9 trillion created inflation. And it's a simple definition of inflation. Too much money chasing too few goods. It was chasing no goods. So there was an eventuality of inflation. Now, the politicians don't want to blame him because he's not elected. Why would we go after him? we got to go after the other guy. So Biden gets blamed 100%, but Biden does get blamed the massive, ridiculous spending. Combined with the $9 trillion of printing. So inflation came, and where the first major doofusness came was he, this other moron, Janet Yellen. And by the way, we don't like using these terms, but they're running the frickin' country, and they are morons. They're debt-laden, kicking us in the you-know-whats, morons. So they told us there wasn't any inflation. 
as it was skyrocketing from Biden to Harris to Yellen to Powell and the rest of the idiots at the Fed. But here's the key. And I want you to listen carefully. And I keep telling everybody on TV. And it just. The issue with the TV is there's so many people giving opinions. Every. I think a lot gets lost in the shuffle. But I've, I, as I've told you, here is what happened. As Jay Powell stayed at 0%. And stopped printing money once we opened up. He couldn't keep printing. The free market, the bond market, yield started skyrocketing. As yield started skyrocketing, he sat and did nothing. His job at that point, by the way, the the real free market yields. His job at that point is to recognize we're opening up, business is coming back, the free flow of goods and all that. And this job at that point, we were on here in real time telling you, start raising rates a little bit. Go a quarter, go a half, go through, whatever. And he sat. And rates kept going up. And finally, as inflation kicked into gear, They started saying it was transitory, don't worry, but it wasn't. Finally, he was forced to raise rates. But he was so far behind bear market and stocks, inflation out of hand, the moron in the White House print uh, running deficits up the wazoo, two trillion bucks, lies about the Inflation Reduction Act. He was on video yesterday or today saying we should have called it the uh, Green Energy Act. What a schmuck. So over time, J. Powell kept raising rates because he was forced to. Not because he wanted to, he was forced to. And all of a sudden, he became the inflation fighter. And he kept raising and raising to the point where he got to five and a quarter percent from zero on the low end, five and a half percent on the high end. And these are the federal funds rates. And what they are is what banks lend and deposit with each other at those rates. But they also have a... An, uh, an easing effect or a tightening effect with the economy. What has happened this year? We've been walking you through it as well as his, we're measuring our words again, doofusness. He didn't listen to the real free market while interest rates skyrocketed because he thinks he's a genius and can do no wrong. And now it's happening the other way what do i mean yields went from five percent last october remember what we said the free market of yields down to three eight but back up to four seven in april back and forth The bond market was trying to figure itself out. The economy, as we have said to you, as long as the job market stays in shape, we should be okay. And the job market stayed in shape. But what's happened in recent months is the job market's done a little what I call slip sliding away. Not the end of the world, but... It's softening. And we have been giving you our own little channel checks on that. So we knew that. And the numbers that have been coming out are softening also. And the 10-year yield goes from 4.7 to 3.7. But Jay Powell's at five and a quarter. Huh. 
So we stayed at 0% when yields went from zero up to like two, two and a quarter, two and a half, three, and then finally played catch up. But the genie was out of the bottle, as they say. And now it's the other way. He's way behind. And we think the market knows it. And we think that's why the market is gagging. And we think the economy is now heading into stall. Up next, we'll put a bow tie on this. And whatever else, this is the one and only Investor's Edge. America is talking. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. With Gary Kaltbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. So, what we have. In the recent past, we had a meltdown in the market. We rallied back up. But on that rally, what did we tell you? We simply told you the semiconductors are lagging. A much, much, much economically sensitive area because they're in everything. And pretty much the leading group up and down. So we're seeing the job market getting in trouble. We have told you. If we lose the job market, we think the economy is going to get in trouble. We have oil prices tanking. We have copper prices tanking. Uranium tanking. Interest rates tanking, which usually is a buffer for the market. And as the interest rates tank... Every tick lower, J. Powell moves farther and farther away, and the market recognizes more and more, measuring the words, his doofusness. And we're just now, and we this is not the first time, we're thinking the economy as a whole dropping off a little ledge here we're not saying grand canyon but a little ledge and why do we say that well little channel checks numbers on on jobs but the market is damn smart and when i see caterpillar and united rentals gagging when i see the building construction stocks that were hanging in there melt down this week When I see semiconductors just absolutely blasted, it is one big, fat, juicy wake-up call. And this guy is sitting back thinking he's a genius. The next meeting's announcement is September 18th, which is 12 days away. And all I can tell you is the condition of the market worsened markedly this week with semiconductors leading down. And if the economy's worsened, we told you, they'll get the financials that have been holding up well. Guess what? They got the financials this week. Goldman Sachs, down $31 this week. For no reason? Of course there's a reason. For starters. So the other part of the equation that we think the economy's got issues, what have we been telling you had the relative strength 
the most recession resistant stocks in the market recession resistant means what companies are you still going to go to even if we go into recession if you have a baby you are gonna buy the diapers you're gonna buy the formula you're gonna buy your sodas you're not going to buy your Prada pocketbooks. You may spend four days in Disney instead of seven. There's discretionary versus non-discretionary. You addicts of nicotine, for whatever reason, you'll still buy your cigs. If you love cereal in the morning, you're still going to get your Raisin Bran and your I Loved Captain Crunch. And you may just still get your yodels and hostess Twinkies too. So food, drug, beverage, and you got to clean the countertops. You got to wash the dishes. You got to do the laundry. So the Procter and Gambles and the Church and Dwight's and the Colgate's that you got to brush your teeth and your Clorox. So the market is screaming at Jay Powell, and he's still sitting there. I have no clue what next week brings, but this sucker is on the defensive, and we ain't playing around. As you know, we told you where we stood. We own no technology, and we love tech. The evil geniuses on Wall Street don't know what the hell's going on. They think everything's great while these things are now melting down. The AI favorites like Broadcom today, down $16 today, almost 11% breaking down. That's one of the glamour AIs. The Super Micro, we already told you about. NVIDIA down to 102 and change from 141. Microsoft down eight today. That's down from 468 to 401 and change. By the way, we sold that at 453. <laughs> and not a lot of stones are being left unturned. Utilities, good relative strength, recession resistant. Electricity, certain component of insurance stocks they're complaining about gouging from supermarkets no the greatest gougers are these insurance companies all states raising homeowners insurance in california 34 percent wow huh good on them medicals hanging in there not all they just broke down eli Lilly. that thing's a goner now and we're just letting you know at the close of business today ick and the next Fed meeting where Jay Powell will play catch up is not for 12 days. And I got to tell you, Gary Kaltbaum, handsome and buff Gary, if I was the Fed, I'd be at four and a quarter right now, not five and a quarter. And it sends, since I would be the most important financial man on earth. It would be sending this big freaking signal, I'm on it. But his ego and omnipotent feelings of himself has him just, eh, you know, sitting back. So let's discuss something here. If we go into a recession of consequence, if, we're not saying we are, if, and the market's starting to pick up the, that noise, the market's going to be a bunch lower. The semiconductors are already in a bear market. Already. In the 20s, as they call it. The NASDAQ has gone from 18, let's call it 18.7 to 16.7. 2,000 points. That's only about 11%. Not a biggie. The S&P from the high, hardly anything. 5670 to 5408. What is that? 260 on 50. 
five percent I can promise you if we go into recession it'll be a lot more we'll stay on it every day but we're just letting you know a very much worsening market because let me measure my words again the doofus does not understand that the market is king he's the court jester he needs to be more in line with markets so markets believe he's on somewhat of target uh, advanced declines not good up down volume not good the finish not good the only good news no I'm not gonna mention it there's some people that call for crashes every day of the week out there. Yeah, we're going to crash. We're going to crash. Uh, we don't talk in those terms. We just think the market's in trouble here. And certainly it can open wide. And we wouldn't be surprised if it did, especially with the semiconductors leading down. Uh, Monday will be another day. And we'll see how it goes. That's our take. We are hyper defensive. Up next, what else? I'm Gary. This is the one that only investors edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaugh. All right. A few other things I want you to be careful about. The Lululemon CEO. Uh, announced that he bought a million bucks worth of his stock. The stock has crashed recently. I think it's window dressing. Uh, I think the guy's worth a bazillion dollars. So a million bucks is a fly on an elephant's rear end. Uh, when I see insider buying, best example I can give you in many years was Wynn's Resort. Steve Wynn bought $100 million of his own stock. I think it was 2016. Stock, I think, quadrupled right after that. So I don't give any credence to Lululemon there. Um, jobs revision. The job market came out today less than expected, uh, but the revisions keep on coming. Uh, and uh, basically, I don't trust anything coming out of the, the government's mouth at this point with the revisions uh, that they've had to do. To me, it's almost a comedy act uh, at this point in time. Um, I don't even know what to tell you. Uh, in the election, um, well, What, what, what's the line? Fool me once, shame on you. Okay. So we're just letting you know, uh, we trust no politicians as we enter to the, uh, uh, go, go towards an election. They're just so full of crap. And really, a person that has been lying to us for three and a half years, we wouldn't trust a word this person has to say. A person that have showed themselves in their whole lifetime now telling you they're the exact opposite. We trust not. We, we just want to give you a little uh, Kamala Harris shifting her life story. Uh, she once called for banning all plastic str straws. Uh, she's now announcing she's no longer for it. She once called for a mandate 
by 2035, automakers can only make electric and hydrogen vehicles. Mandate. She's now says she's not for it. The banning of fracking. She's now not for it. And of course, that's the biggest bullcrap of them all because Pennsylvania. Because if she announced that now, she loses Pennsylvania and she cannot win the White House. Uh, a mandatory buyback program for assault weapons as part of her gun safety agenda. Uh, she's no longer for, longer for a mandatory buyback program. Just, And I'm not taking any sides here. I'm just telling you about her. A decriminalizing crossing the border from a criminal offense to a civil one. You know they're illegal when they come in. She wanted to get rid of illegal, make it civil. Uh, she no longer supports that. Uh, reparations for slavery. Well, the position's unclear now because she was on a radio show the other day and said no, and then she was on a TV show with Al Sharpton and said yes. So she can't figure herself out on that yet. It's one of those, depends who I'm talking to. Uh, building a wall on the southwest border. She's now accepting it as a part of the border package that may or may not be out there and has run ads with Donald Trump's wall in the ad on video. No, not making that up. A federal jobs guarantee part of a Green New Deal. No longer for it. Uh, Medicare for all. Uh, no private health insurance. All government run health insurance like they have in the United Kingdom. That is basically shot to hell. Uh, she's no longer for it. Am I supposed to believe anything that comes out of her mouth? I don't. What's interesting is, why aren't the lefties crapping in their pants, screaming at her, that no longer do we like her and we're no longer voting for her? You know why? Uh, she's got a D. She's a D, not an R. So everything... That the greenies have been calling for, she's now against. And the rest. And this is why she's only done one interview with a friend of hers. That was stand-up comedy at best. Because we listed for you the questions we would have asked that weren't. And that's our take on Vice President Harris. And as we said also, Joe Biden came out and admitted that the Inflation Reduction Act was just a climate bill. He slipped up in a speech, either yesterday or today. I saw it today. It may have been from yesterday. Lion sack. And was proud of the $375 billion of our tax dollars given to one man, John Podesta, Democratic hack, for climate. And we don't know where $1 of that is gone. We do know $8 billion went towards charging stations and they came out with eight of them. Or maybe seven. Trump. And we'll do a lot more on Trump Monday. The one thing I do like... He wants to hire Elon Musk to go through government and make it more efficient and less costly. I should have that job. I'd quit my job today to go to D.C. to do that job. We'd be running balanced budgets the first year, the second year.
it would take a year. Hmm. I don't think they'd be paying me enough. Ladies and gentlemen, wish I had better news for you, but the market sucked this week. We'll see what happens next week. I'm worried. You have a great weekend. Drive carefully, and when you get home, do like we do. It's quite simple. Make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They will feel better. You will feel better, I promise. Peace out all. Serenity now. I'm taking a nap. But I do have air conditioning. Good night. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.